right now in our bulletin because um, because our there, our staff is crisscrossing past this summer. So right now we're going to keep Sherry in our prayers. She is in the Dominican Republic doing mission work with her whole family and the congregation that she works with. And Lauren is in Florida, maybe coming home to stay sometime soon. Very soon. Anyway, so we're going to keep Lauren in our prayers as she travels back, and then. Um, and then, but, um, but on Saturday, this coming week, I leave with Davis, no, not Davis, sorry, with Parker back there and, um, other, and Nevea and, um, the rest of our youth, the rest of our youth group that is going on our mission trip to Lake Traverse, South Dakota. So at 445 on Saturday morning, and mark your calendars right now. You're laughing. Don't laugh. This is a serious thing. At 4.45 a.m. on Saturday morning, you're all going to set your alarms, wake up, and say a prayer for the youth group who is leaving for Lake Traverse. And coming to send us off is optional. You can come to the parking lot and say the prayer with us. But if you want to just from your bed, God will say, God will hear you, okay? And if you accidentally sleep through your alarm, the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning would be great if you'd say a little prayer for our group who's heading off to Lake Traverse for their mission trip. Um, we will be learning about, um, about the reservation where we're serving and um, doing all kinds of things like painting and, and just helping and working alongside people and building some relationships that way so keep the group in your prayers and safe travels and so forth and um pray for luke because he's most likely going to drive because <laughs> i learned last year that that's not my skill set <laughs> so <laughs> um let's see so next Sunday, Pastor Rob will be here to lead us in worship. Um, Lenita and Rob and Chris and I went to Synod Assembly um, Friday and Saturday this week. And, um, and the whole Synod Assembly this, this year's theme was go and, go and serve, go and learn, go and share the gospel, go and listen. There's 12 different things that we can go and do, and we're going to spend the year as a congregation doing those things. Um, together, but um, next Sunday, Juanita and Chris will share just a tiny bit in worship service about what we learned at Synod Assembly, but in the middle, in between services, they'd like to share substantially more. So if you'd like to come and just visit with them about Synod Assembly, plan to be here around 9.30 next week. Um, and should there need for pastoral assistance, um, well, we're in Lake Travers, give Pastor Rob a call. Um, this coming week, before we even go on our mission trip, we have Vacation Bible School, and as you can see, it's going to be out of this world. Isn't that amazing? Didn't, weren't the decorations fun? Um, so, if you have not yet signed up, your kids, your grandkids, your neighbors, the people who you met at the grocery store at hy V and told about this, all that, if you haven't signed them up yet, today would be a really great day to do it, because they can sign up on Tuesday when they walk in the door, but if they sign up early, then we will not panic quite as much and we'll plan better, okay? Um, and let's see, the last announcement that is not in your bulletin because um, we made these early is our barbecue fundraiser, which was really a good time last night. Oh, just kidding, it wasn't. <laughs> um, we had to postpone it um, because of things, problems that arose that were not in our control, but it's going to be postponed till August 19th. So if this was a bad weekend for you and you would have really liked to have come, mark your calendars right now for August 19th and plan on attending. And Colin is in worship today and you could just let him know that you'll be here if you'd like to. Okay? Other announcements that we need to make note of today? How about other prayer concerns? Then let's rise and begin by singing.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, as we celebrate this Trinity Sunday, we remember that you are the God of relationship, so full of love that through one, that though one, you manifest love in relationship of three. You invite us and all creation into a loving relationship with you. And yet, Lord, we mess that relationship up all of the time. Today we pause and we conf- and, and speak aloud our confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have damaged our relationship with you, Lord, with each other. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us of all our sins. The called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to us today the entire forgiveness of all our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one. We praise your power, majestic three in one. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was good. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, the fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the domes of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth and it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light above the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast on the earth and to every bird of the air, 
and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, you whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, What are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under your feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Abel, for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'd invite Xander and Luke and Tyson to come up today. Please? Yeah, I said Luke. Don't stand, come stand real quick for me. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday. And Luke and I teach about the triune God and confirmation we spend. Um, Andrew, you can stay where you're at today, okay? Yeah, we're doing something a little different today. Um, we teach about the triune God and confirmation. We teach the Apostles' Creed when we teach that. We spend at least six months doing it. And so if you think my sermons are long, I mean, we could. So we're going to not try to do the entire Trinity today in worship. Instead, we're going to focus on the story from Genesis 1. But I was thinking about this story just a little bit, and, I, and the whole story starts out with nothing, a vast void of nothingness except there's God. And God, God is so big that God cannot be contained in just one thought, or in just one expression, or in just one idea, or in just one action. God is so big that God is one, but God is connected in three. And so, Xander, you get to be God today. Don't let it go to your head, because you're really not. Okay? Right, but you're going to pretend for me. And Tyson, and Luke, and Xander. Hold this one too. See now? One, but three. And 
And God's love gets expressed in multiple ways. In fact, in my head, when I think about God, I, I think about this whole God talking to oneself. Do you ever do that? Do you ever have so much love and so much joy and so much everything going on in yourself that your head just does this conversation that's just there? Multiply that times God, right? And I think that's at least a part of what's going on with the Trinity. No, God is in relationship with God's self, and God looks out at this whole nothingness void and says, well, that's kind of boring. Okay, that's not in the Bible, but I think. I think that's part of how creation gets started, right? I can do better than that. And God says, let there be light. And so, there is light. And God says, oh, that's cool. That's not in the Bible either, but pretty sure, right? So now there's light and there's darkness. And God says, well, that's pretty cool, but we can do more. Let's make sun and moon and stars. Ashley. And planets. And more stars. And God says, wow, that is good. And, and look, look at what begins to happen. God begins to make this whole great big interconnected universe. And here's the thing. We're going to teach a little bit about the don't drop the star. When one star falls out of the sky, bad things happen. Just saying, right? So they're all held up there together somehow, and they're all interconnected. And yes, when one star falls, Things get disrupted, right? There's a plan and a purpose and an order to how this whole creation goes. And it is vast beyond measure. I've been researching it a little bit for Vacation Bible School. And did you know that there is the known universe, what we can see and get to, not really see like what scientists with their tools that can stretch way, way, way further than we can see can get to. That's ginormous. But then there's the unknown known universe, and they think that maybe the unknown known universe is at least three times bigger than the known universe. And I wonder how they know that, because if they don't know it, I don't know. But seriously, huge. This universe that God puts spinning out there in creation is amazing. And God says, it's good. Then God says, well, let's get a little bit smaller creates this huge, ginormous world, but let's get a little bit smaller. So let's create, let's create sky. And let's create water. And let's create land. And all of that sky and water and land is connected together. It's interconnected. Because you see, the land without the water gets mighty dry and mighty cracked. We know this, right? We're all praying for a little more water, right? And the water without the land gets very low because when the land gets too much water, it evaporates up into the sky, and the sky gets filled with water, and the water comes down from the sky, and it fills the water up, and then the land gets watered, and it's all connected, right? Don't you love my scientific dis... I didn't pass that class in school, but you get the gist of it, right? It's all connected. And when one part, don't drop your part, when one part falls out of, out of whack, the whole thing, the whole thing is a little off balance, but it's all connected because God is connected and God wants to involve us in this vast connection of love. So there's land and there's water and there's sky, and God says, well, there's a lot of empty space in that land, water, and sky. Let's fill it up. So let's make some plants. All kinds of plants. A lot of plants. And let's make some sea animals, because, I mean, there's a lot of water. Sea animals, a lot of sea animals. And let's make some land animals. 
Well, actually, sky animals came first, I think, in the story. Let's make some sky animals, because I mean, whoopsie. That's all right. Whoa, not all right. Coordination, that's not my thing either, is it? All right, we're all good. Sky animals, and you just keep on going here. Sky animals, and then some land animals. And you know, there's a vast multitude of them all, right? And it's good. And all of them are inter interconnected because they need each other. The animals need the plants, the plants need the sky. It all is interconnected. And then God says, are we better? Then God says, let's make people. Because God loves this relationship. Let's make people in our image. Let's make people all about relationship. And so God begins creating people. You see how even though God is one, God is diverse somehow in his oneness. So let's make people diverse. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Let's make people diverse. All color sizes. All cultures and ideas. Get all these people connected. Here you go. Stephanie and Justin, connect yourself. I don't want anybody left out. Okay? Back row. Everybody got a spot? Okay, who am I missing here? Over here. Stretch it over there to Ryan. Don't leave him out. And we got the front turn here. Okay. All right. We're getting there. This world is a mighty creative world of people. Okay, back row. Come on. Who am I missing? Michelle, you're out of the you're out of the loop here. Okay, got it. All right, come on back row. Come on, get up here. You're part of the people's front row. Okay. Teresa, imagine yourself included, okay? You got your string up there. I see it. All right, good. All right, so this vast, crazy, interconnected world, everyone depends on somebody. God's in relationship with all of us. And God says, it is good, so good, this connected, wonderful, loving world that I've made. God says, it's good. God does not say, it's perfect. I think that's a really important distinction in this story. It's not necessarily perfect. God did not make us perfect. Probably the only perfect part is God, and don't let it go to your head because you're not, okay? <laughs> All right. Right. The only perfect is up there. We are not so perfect because we sin, and we have some struggles, and we get ourselves out of whack even though we're interconnected. And look what happens when we do. Hold on to it. Don't let your praise fall out. Look what happens when we do. I'm struggling, but that part of the world is holding me up somehow. I'm not in it alone. We are never, never, never alone. God did not create us to be alone. God created us to be part of this interconnected everything. And even when we think we are alone, go outside for a half a second and look, look at the vast universe that God made and know that God put you in it for a purpose and a reason and you are connected because God loves you. You are loved that much. When we are struggling, God helps us to hold each other up. So now I want you to just think on your own right now. And I want you to think of a time in the not so distant long before, where this was true for you, when you were the person who thought, okay, I don't know how I'm gonna get through tomorrow or the next minute, or I'm just barely breathing right now, but somebody else or something else or creation or the spirit or I don't know, but there was a moment that somehow got you through. 
because you are connected and God loves you. And we are connected to each other and we are called to love. This has been one of those weeks I could name, I could go on and on, the sermon could be really long, of how people have held up my family this week. You're a gift, a huge gift. I hope you can all quickly think of a story yourself. And then take a moment and remember that sometimes you're the one doing the holding up. And that that is part of being part of God's creation too. And it is good, so good when we get to do that for each other. It's a gift. But this creation is not perfect. And sometimes it's not about struggling. Sometimes we try to just hold it all to ourselves. It feels not so good when we do this, right? It feels pretty awful. In fact, we try to tug each other down instead of holding each other up. That is sin. And it is not good not good at all. And when we do this, the world gets way out of whack. Creation gets out of whack. Our relationships get out of whack. The whole everything gets out of whack. And we might begin to wonder if there's any hope for us at all, but there is. There is. Because here's the hope. God. God loves all this. And God knows that we are not perfect And God has chosen a million times over to redeem and to forgive and to breathe the Spirit and to recreate and to help us start again. God says, I am with you always to the end of the age. And again and again and again, God takes this and helps us start anew. There is love in that. When we are struggling because somebody is doing this to us, look at the Lord who forgives. Look at the Lord who recreates and pray. Pray that you can be a person of forgiveness. Pray that God can recreate something in you. But know that God is at work even then. We are an interconnected being. And God says, it is good, not perfect. God says, I love this. God says, I made you to be in relationship, to love each other, interconnected so that nobody has to fall down alone. We hold each other up. God says, when you try to pull each other down, there is forgiveness, and we will start again but I will never give up on you. So maybe the next sentence is, don't give up on each other. Amen. Thanks be to God. This is a um, children's slash adult sermon, right? (laughs) And uh, so you don't get a piece of candy today, but I want you to take home your string. And I want you to use your string today um, as as a prayer for the week. Use it to remember the beauty of God's creation and give thanks for it. Use it to remember the people that you're connected to and pray for them and know that they are praying for you because of the interconnection. And use it for the times when you know that forgiveness is needed. Ask about where you're at in this grand relationship of God's universe and ask God to help you in the midst of it. So let me uncut up myself here. We're not actually cutting apart the creation, but we're going to all take a piece of it home, okay? And here, start cutting. And I have four more scissors. And maybe the praise team should cut themselves free first so that we can sing a little bit while the rest of the congregation gets... Oh, good job, Luke. You had a scissors all on yourself. Sort of. (laughs) Here you go. You got one? Okay, all right. There's one. Take some to the back. What a mess. Who let the pastor play today? Oh. There you go. There you go. Yeah, right. Thank you.
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel and direct all the baptized lives, baptized into lives of humble service. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy three, holy one, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind, wild animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy three, holy one, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy three, holy one, you promised to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need with your healing presence, any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick. God, in your mercy. Holy three, holy one, you set the earth on its axis, and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer, those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by child care responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy three, holy one, you give rest when our work is done. We give thanks for all the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of resurrection life in the age to come. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
drive with your able, let us pray. For all that you have given us, we thank you, gracious God. For day and night, evening and morning. For land and sea, for fish and birds, plants and animals, for humankind, and for your Son. Who came among us to be the gift of life abundant. Let your Holy Spirit abide in our midst and work through our gifts that all people may have joy and peace in Jesus' name. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The meal is ready, and all are welcome at this table. Please come forward as the ushers give instruction today.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace and love. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment that you have, we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We are sent out to love and serve God with our lives. We go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm not going to be able to do it. 